Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and this is going to be another in the series of videos showing the new add-on features that use JavaScript in FileMaker Pro 19.1. So we're going to start by making a brand new database. Just I just click File, New, click Blank. This will make a database, I'll just call it Demo, and it will have the standard uh, five fields that we get. I'm just going to click OK here in the corner and let it create that. And then immediately I'm going to go to layout mode. And the one we're going to look at today is going to be the activity timeline. So we'll choose that first one and click choose. And now that is part of this file. So if I close and open this file, that add-on is there. And as with the other add-ons to add it to our database, we just click and drag and bring it out to the uh, layout. Um, it's also useful to note that this is an, an a object that is grouped. So if I change the size, you can see that it changes the size of more than maybe what I want. So the first thing I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to ungroup it. And then that gives me my web viewer part that I can then resize uh, as I need. So I can make it a little bit taller, maybe a little bit wider. And then I'm going to shrink the layout so that it um, fits nicely. And then maybe move this over to the edge. OK, so with these add-ons, what we get if we double click on the web viewer is you get this a little bit of code that runs a JavaScript. And you don't really have to worry about any of it. You, don't, you shouldn't really even change anything. It's just a, a let function in here. And so I'm just going to go to exit layout um, to, to browse mode here. And then immediately, I'm actually going to see some sample data. So the sample data that I see here is actually in another layout in this database. So if I click over, I'm going to open up actually a new window. And there's a layout in here called Activity Timeline Sample Data. And so if I went to this one and I said, uh, like, find the data for September 23rd, I see this new record. So let's say I want to make another record for that day. I'll just call it another test record. Um, and I'll say, um, you know, schedule a planning meeting with Marissa. and type correctly, um, choose the date that it was completed, assign to Marissa. And the style is uh, nice. So some of these are a little bit bold in here, but you can, of course, customize all of that. I'm going to click. Actually, I'm not going to close this one because I want to see um, when I go back to the other layout um, that that immediately comes up. And if I then change this by clicking on it, that actually uses the same layout we were just on. And I can change the date and say this was completed maybe the, the 1st of October. When I click Close, my timeline immediately updates. And if I go back to my record, I'll see that it has actually been updated. So you can update the record, of course, in either place. And it's even the same layout. If I want to change the look of this layout in any way, maybe I want to make the title two lines high or something like that, I can just grab it, make these changes, uh, and then when I save my change, that's actually going to affect how these work here. So now I can see I've got two lines of height. So this is a really straightforward one. It'd be very easy to connect to your data. Um, you can, uh, if you uh, modify your, your layout and you pin this so that it um, is pinned to the bottom of the screen, like other ones, you can change it so that when you resize your layout, the web viewer part uh, modifies, both in height and width, if you want to do it that way. Um, and then it's very, very nice and configurable. So how do you configure it? You click on this little gear, and this brings up a different layout that was brought in. And this is where you can choose what the sample data is that you're connecting to. Um, I, I think that with these plugins, with these add-ons, it's actually an easier way to configure it to just use the table that automatically comes along with it. Um, if you rename fields, be aware that it's going to break. So you're going to have to re-go into the configuration and change to the new field although that's easy enough to do if you want to use different field names. Um, so yeah, use the table that's there and then kind of adapt it. And it maybe is a little bit easier than connecting it to your data, but both ways will certainly work. And then as with the other add-ons, you, you get um, some required fields. You have to choose uh, a layout that, that has your sample data. You have to choose a primary key, and you have to choose a timestamp, because uh, obviously the activity timeline needs that timestamp information. And then there's optional information. And one of the things we also see is you can filter this, which hasn't even been set up here yet. You can set a filtered field that only shows you certain timeline data, for example, only things in the future, only things that are undone, something like that. 
Um, so yeah, this is a great add-on, and I think this is going to be very useful for a lot of people. Thanks very much for watching today.